Hello everyone. No, let me smile. <laughs> Today we have a very special guest with us. He represents a life that is all about balance. <laughs> Welcome, you. sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. So today we want to like know about you, sir. Basically, grew up in village called uh, Kakkaragolla. It's a small village uh, near Daungir. We lived in a cow shed where there were no walls. My father was working in Mysore College without any salary. Three years I spent in Bangalore. Other than that, entire life was spent in village. So that's like the attitude which has carried you forward in life. Like you, you, you know how to live well no matter what you have. Like some kind of understanding that uh, nothing belongs to me. When you were a kid, you used to play with rats. Like you've told me this since you know you did not have any other form of entertainment other than you know. No, we had other forms of entertainment. <laughs> When you were growing up, did you feel like you were deprived of a lot of things? In fact, uh, I remember drinking a glass full of milk only after my 12th standard during the uh, depressive phase of UPSC preparation. Sometimes I used to uh, feel that you know I can be shepherd, I can be a cow herd. So in Canada, Dana kind. Of so when things are not going well, you start dreaming about any kind of job. In the beginning, very much attached because I really wanted to be an IAS officer. I want you to talk about your school life. Went to Navodaya School, and that was the life changing. I learned something about leadership. To go out of my comfort zone, do something. I gave me a BD. Okay. Ganesh BD. Right. Mm-hmm. So like this sitting, and then you are just like I was <laughs> licking it. So you keep tweeting about stealing things, you know. So only once I tweeted about stealing. <laughs> Such an ethical person, like, so how do you justify stealing, sir? So I feel like I should have stolen more, like. <laughs> Now I don't steal anything. Actually. How do we define what is big, what is small? So if I want to deal with them myself, then I have to enhance my capabilities. So would you like to give a message, you know, to all the students watching, sir? Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of our podcast A Little More Light. Today we have a very special guest with us. He represents a life that is all about balance. A balance between strengths and imperfections, ambition and contentment, failures and successes. He's none other than the founder and director of Insights IAS, Mr. Vinay Kumar Jeevi. Thank Welcome you. sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. So sir, how does it feel to be a guest on your podcast today? Like this was your baby. You dreamed about this podcast for months. Like you don't know that sir's been planning this since months on end, and finally, like it's here. Like you know, a reality. So how does it feel today? <sighs> <laughs> it actually uh, feels good at the same time. Uh, feels weird also. The reason is that uh, so I like to be. in that position where i like to know more about people whether it is an aspirant or uh, any stranger i am meeting so when i am sitting here and when you are asking me questions it really feels weird and i don't know how it is going to end up but you have full freedom to ask anything sir so sir we got like tremendous emails messages comments like where is vinay sir where is vinay sir we want to know about sir so right now we all know that you are the founder director of insights is but like no one knows who you are as a person like your circumstances your past experiences like how you know how they shaped you how they molded you how they transformed you into who you are today and how they like you know taking you know taking you forward towards your future so today we want to like you know know about you sir like who you are as a person and you know your life so yeah that's the whole idea of <laughs> podcast so you just returned uh, from you know your vacation to delhi recently so how was it sir yeah it it was a special trip special uh, for the reason that uh, uh, we as a family you know i have two kids one is 4 and 1/2 year old and another 1 and 1/2 years old and uh, so both of them are learning to walk talk eat you know, first time experiences and uh, we didn't know how to manage them to take out to wholly different place and uh, and then we took our parents also together for uh, my father it was the first flight of his lifetime and uh, for my wife it, this was the third time for my children first time and again for my in-laws uh, 
uh, my wife's parents so for them also it was first time experience uh, it was a great experience because everything was made smooth by uh, some of my students who were posted the trip per se as an experience very pleasant and uh, rewarding in terms i learned i i try to learn you know by visiting places and interacting with people i learned so many things what i learned if you can ask me la i'll answer it <laughs> so what do you learn so like i you know i'm asking about this trip specifically because you know you you tweeted there was a tweet like some you asked people for their suggestions like where to visit in delhi and agra and there was a particular tweet i forgot by who and he asked you to go you know try out this place uh, on you know on the road side or something mm-hmm. for to eat something and he said maybe it may be below your standards so you know i don't think you'd want to go but then there was a reply by you where, you know you like we are from the village you know i'm very grounded you know we are attached to our roots and this is the first flight experience so you know uh, firstly i i messaged you after reading that like you know it's so great to see this humility and you know the complete uh, what do you say you so uh, fearless so you know unafraid of accepting from where you know where you're from or your roots and you know just how let's say it's like my first flight and we're going for the first time so you know you don't try to put on a show you know to people like hey you know what this is me and this is my family i'm going no this mm. is us and you know we're really proud of where we are from and it's a great experience like please teach. like you want to learn and you want you know so that was really good so there are no like standards or anything right uh, today i can live in literally many people don't might not believe it but uh, if the situation arises i can sleep on a street also i can completely rely on street food i mean whatever is available at the same time i'm equally comfortable now and i used to be uncomfortable like even few months ago uh, to stay in like luxury hotels have uh, <clears throat> lunch or dinner in luxury hotel you know all this buffet yeah. and uh, all all those folks and other things i tweeted about that also yeah, i like, refer to it it's all because of uh roots that lie in you know our uh, uh, village backgrounds parents are from villages in fact i grew up uh, till age 31 in village except for education brief moment like 3 years i spent in bangalore other than that entire life was spent in village this village again uh, we were not like well off right within the village uh, we had a i don't know if i should share these things so i basically grew up in village called uh, kakkarogolla okay so kakkarogolla is a small village uh, near daungir so it is at the heart of um, karnataka is a district it's a kind of commercial uh, city uh, known for education and all but in this village uh, when uh, we were growing up we lived in a cow shed you know cow shed yeah you told me about so i think it was uh, not even half of this podcast room where there were no walls there was no wall for kitchen there was no wall for bathroom also you know there is the old uh, sari so that was okay. tied as part of the bathroom and then uh, <clears throat> i used to live with uh, my brother and my mother my father was working in mysore so he was working in a college without any salary we had to sustain ourselves because my f- mother used to work in other homes and all so so you said your father worked without a salary is mm. that so he never no, that was because uh, uh, he got a job where he was promised he would be given salary okay. and then what happened was uh, he was not given any salary because there was no grant from the government okay and uh, it was run by a small uh, trust i think where uh, the fees was very less they were not able to collect fees because it was located in a small village and uh, i remember uh, in back in 90s like you know when uh, my mem- mem- memory goes back to when i was like first standard mm-hmm. we directly got admitted to first standard there was no lkg ukg stuff and all so i think it was uh, 1990 right so he used to uh, send like 50 rupees once in 3 months something like that so that 50 rupees used to be what you know we used to go to vegetable market to buy vegetables little, little enough to and most of the life was uh, you know going on because the neighbors used to be kind 
Okay. Someone would give you a small glass of milk. Someone would give you some all this chili, onion. That is how the village life is, right? So there was my mother's home also, um, where some kind of problem was there. My father was not in good terms with his in-laws, so okay. we were not allowed to visit that home. In village, these are common, you know, among relatives, we have to you fight a lot. So uh, they had a small shop. So now and then I used to steal one rupee, two rupee. Okay. Uh, I mean, I used to go there without their knowledge. Uh, there was one mama, you know, my mother's brother. Mm-hmm. So when I, he was fond of me and my brother also, we used to go there and uh, uh, in the pretension of playing or something. So that Sweet. used to be our savings. Nice. So, so. Uh, this is a very long story. The point here is that. Uh, because we grew up in such a condition, so now because life has changed, so I live in a penthouse to be honest, like 28th, 29th floor of a posh area. But within the walls of that penthouse, our life is still like village life. I've heard you, uh, there was someone who came to meet you, like, you know, in full suit and everything uh, down below actually, and they asked you, like, why don't you shift to the other building or something you know i think it's mm. going like no no in our house we're like you know it's a complete village the doors always open correct so mini village so ours is house. the only apartment whose doors are always open yeah and uh, the neighbor where we live you know they love this fact that our door is always open and they, they have a small kid uh, mm. again one, one two year old girl she comes inside she walks with our kids uh, plays with our kids and i think uh, so i don't know we so, are we are what we are so like when you were growing up did you feel like you were deprived of a lot of things like your friends may have had like you know better facilities and it's like growing up in you know in such like i, I would say utter poverty would you call it utter poverty no i don't mm-hmm. call it poverty we never saw it okay like that now only when you look back it looks yeah. like poverty and all at that time we had enough to eat uh, though not of good quality stuff. In fact, uh, I remember drinking a glass full of milk only after my 12th standard. Okay. In nowadays school, we used to steal now and then, but uh, mm-hmm. at my home, so we didn't have that luxury and all. So, but uh, only now, when you look back, it looks like poverty mm-hmm. and all. Maybe uh, my parents didn't allow us to feel like that. So, I remember they buying clothes and all, good uniform. Even then, uh, we didn't have other luxuries. But I never felt we were deprived of something because I think, because my father was educated, he focused on our education. And uh, we studied well till fifth standard and then cleared the exam, Navoda entrance exam, okay. into Navoda school. And that was the life changing. Seven years of uh, absolute free stuff in everything. Everything, like literally, they gave everything free of cost. Not a single rupee was taken for seven years. Starting with, you know, hair oil, toothbrush, paste, soap, everything uh, except our private cloths, inner wares and uh, one or two pairs of cloths to wear on Sundays. Other than that, everything. So, never felt like, you know, we were poor or anything. It's only now when I look back, it looks like parents really struggled a lot and we might have struggled, but the whole village was like that. So. So you had like this attitude of contentment, like, you know, you were, you were just happy with whatever you had. Even now we see that you're always like happy with what you have. No, I used to feel happy, no, like uh, if I get a glass of milk, feel happy about it. Not worry that, you know, I didn't have it before. Yeah. Right. I mean, I might miss it in the future or anything. So in that moment, you get something that you didn't have and uh, uh, you value it. You know the value of it and in that moment you enjoy it, you cherish it. That's like a really great way to live. Just live in the moment and have gratitude for whatever you're I getting. I think it's because of nowadays school. They had, uh, you know, a common a standard set of uh, routine, standard set of menu for everything. But now and then they used to surprise us, you know. Bread, sometimes they introduced chicken. Like we, In fact, I as a school leader had fought for, you know, inclusion of better like le- yeah. last 11th and 12th you become like a uh, rebel yeah. you are aware of many more things so when we used to get that we used to feel really very happy about it 
that you know something extra is getting but we demanded more of it of course but uh, we never uh, got worried or you know felt bad that you know it was not available all the time so we we knew like how to balance things when you when you don't have anything you can still live a normal dignified life mm-hmm. when you have everything even then you can have a normal dignified life without bragging about it so that's like the attitude which has carried you forward in life like you 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 know how to live well no matter what you have like you know so i think that's the so that is lesson. because some kind of understanding that uh, nothing belongs to me right right like so i i, I don't know from where it came because uh, somewhere i i believe everything is temporary yeah. right anything you have again is not truly doesn't belong to you. my father like used to talk about the land for example so land doesn't belong to anyone right so yeah. in in truest sense it doesn't belong to anyone so we create documents right and then the land doesn't belong to us then the valuation goes up we sell it we buy it you know we do so much drama around land and everything so he used to tell me tell me about these kind of things repeatedly i think i got influenced by that and also i, I remember him telling something you know he told us to be good kids just like be good to everyone uh, i don't want you to bring any bad name to yourself or to your parents or your family and i don't want you to be a doctor <clears throat> i don't want you to be an ias officer you can be anything so i just want you to be a good human being first so i think when parents repeatedly tell you these things it helps you a lot it takes lots of stress away from you and then uh, uh, allows you to focus on what you like and you know what you want to become it gives you a lot of freedom like you said this he gave yeah, you a yeah. lot of freedom like do whatever you want but just be good ah, so, that that is a liberating experience right yes sir so parents do not have any expectations except the very basic expect it is a very liberating because people might not believe i felt like when you know during the uh, depressive phase of upsc preparation sometimes i used to uh, feel that you know i can be shepherd i can be a cowherd so in kannada dana kayadu something like that or i can be anything like it just so when things are not going well you start dreaming about any kind of job uh, i i felt many times i wanted to be a bus conductor i wanted to be a bus driver such kind of roles you know whenever you travel you know tc for example in train right even that job is also good so i can be that also when when in the end uh, when you were not getting what you wanted i used to feel like that so now when parents tell be a good boy good person and uh, then of course this parent is not worried whether i am conductor or driver or anything so that allowed me to focus on my interests like blogging and those things experimenting with life like you had no pressure over yourself to like, do this you know become a doctor so it gives you when there's no pressure like you become free like you can pursue whatever you want and that Correct. really brings out the best in you actually so just having that freedom the only thing is be good do yeah. whatever you want then you are not causing any harm to anyone yes, right sir. not to yourself also not to anyone i think uh, every parent should be like that true so true and um, you know this this uh, being a navodian was a transformative experience for you like anyone who reads your twitter profile knows at least once in a month or once in two months there will be a tweet about that school so um, there's a tweet where you've written that you know the headmaster of your previous school he was so uh, upset that you actually cleared the exam and his daughter who you know was a topper in your class did not and also that you never got marks like above 20 on a 25 uh, you know testing you the last rank in a class of 20 i guess 18th rank see there 20. were like 20 students as yeah. far as i remember it was a small school opened by some educated youth in the village so takkarwala headmaster used to be very strict and uh, his uh, daughter used to always top class 1 to class 5 as far as i remember and there were other two guys who cleared with me now the entrance exam they used to be like rank 2 rank 3 sometimes rank 1 also but me out of 20 i remember like i remember like seeing my name you know whenever they used to give results it used to be in the last like 18 19 20 something like this but uh, they never knew that you know i was exposed to books like 
my father had kept all his books because he didn't have space in single room where he was living so in the home he had like had left so uh, because it was full of rodents rats and you know all kind of insects we had to clean these books all the time i think there was bit amount of general awareness that the school had must didn't know about i think the entrance exam for now they tested that part of you know our abilities so when i cleared like he was literally shocked like i remember that you know the school was we had to climb some uh, stairs somebody had told me like uh, my mother that i had cleared i went to school to verify it. like he was like in disbelief mm-hmm. <laughs> so he was not believing that you know i had cleared so i remember he was cross verifying or like uh, i don't know how we did and all then like he was sad that his daughter mm-hmm. didn't clear i never met him after that so I went to navadeya school when you were a kid you used to play with rats like you told me this since you know you did not have any other you know form of entertainment other than you know no we had other forms of entertainment <laughs> Uh, like in village you know uh, the entire village is entertainment right <laughs> <laughs> how so, how so like for, no you like can just uh, you can just get, get into anyone's house okay, okay, okay. and uh, play with their kids and you can go wherever you want i remember going you know like kilometers together to uh, explore things enter others farms you know steal mango or uh, imli what yeah. you call that in tamarind. english tamarind and uh, so i think most of the people uh, in of my age have done anybody from village you know uh, like for example tamarind you know we used to have a group of kids you know one had to bring salt one had to bring little sugar from his home one had to bring jaggery mm-hmm. so and then the, somebody i mean we would uh, take the stone and yeah hit tamarind and bring the tamarind you know the ripe one and then crush it make that imli wala now it cost like 10 20 rupees okay. per stick i think yeah. so we used to do that on our own like so, so many fun stuff but uh, because we lived in a cow shed and it was the uh, abode of all kinds of uh, rodents so there were so many holes you know we used to i remember like they walking on our feet and i remember like once getting bitten by it also okay. so uh, we used to bring stones right and put them in the hole they used to go go on and on and on like there was no end to you know yeah. the holes and then we used to burn paper you know put into them you know in the hope that you know they will come out and you know run away something like this so like you know now you're talking about you know your village life and it sounds so fun actually like you have the sense of community today we see kids you know parents are putting busy putting them to coaching and you know we get emails my son or my daughter is in this standard how to make them it's so crazy and i feel it's so toxic like you know i think mans and me always like no 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 let us not encourage this like we as an institution also we don't encourage people to be so obsessed with this exam it's just you know a path for your means to you know serve society so it it actually seems like very fun your you know your childhood so we tend to see it from the perspective of oh you miss so much you know you grew up in this cow shed and you know it's it it looks sad but i think you were really content and very happy with what you had and you you made the best use of what you had like you lived your life without feeling like you know bad for yourself and your parents didn't you know propagate that attitude to like you know let's all feel bad for ourselves no, and all that uh, like to be honest i feel bad for uh, parents especially yeah. my mother like there was no privacy you know right to privacy is such a big thing mm-hmm. so absolutely there was no privacy at that time so either me or brother had to wait when you know she was taking bath and all mm-hmm. so i think uh, from her perspective it was difficult from childhood you know we don't think at that age yeah. so you have so many village kids to play around so you would never uh, have felt when you were playing at that time so now looking back it sometimes feel but again um, surprisingly my mother or father have never complained about it i think they were also used to that kind of life also there's this attitude like let's not complain about our things let's just be you know make the best of what we can do with what we have so rather than just complaining and you i think maybe from help. parents it has come to us yeah, yeah. You, you, they you, never complained i think they yeah, are just go actually yeah you you always tend to go with the flow like whatever is happening let's just flow with it and no i feel everything is bonus in life 
it's a really nice uh, way to live actually really nice attitude no i, I really mean it you know when i look into this podcast room and all it's kind of a bonus never expected you know to have chairs like this right mics like this guests and hosts yeah. and you know all this what you have done so i feel uh, uh, i don't take them for granted like you know they are i own them i want them not like that they are just like part of the life they have come because as a bonus maybe gift from someone or something which i don't own right so i want to like i want you to talk about your school life like it really has impacted you in a big way like how did it shape you and you you also tweeted that you know when you entered jnv so you you didn't know english and you know you were this rural kid and people looked down upon you for several years like you were a nobody at that school until you you know came to your 11th standard so how you know like as kids we tend to be really you know self conscious and you know if we get bullied we feel bad but you were always like like even today you're like this you know no matter what people say about you like this is how i am and i'm you know i'm just going to like no, first, be silent and deal with it and you know first two to three years of school i felt bad actually Yeah. because uh, in your uh, in our village we used to be very adventurous i used to be like a bossy kid within the groups very spoiled spoiled in the sense not from the parents perspective you know the village had uh, like i was like you know the dada of the group something like that you know okay gali dena logon ko hard to imagine sir you're so all. soft and mild it's so hard to imagine that <laughs> no no not like that. i used to be like that then went to navodaya school but then suddenly started you know preference was given to english medium kids mm-hmm. so they were made captains of all sports class school everything and they were given special treatment because they were able to score well in tests and everything so class 6th and 6th didn't affect much because We, we were still in the beginning no like we were having fun but 7th and 8th uh, i think i started feeling that i didn't think but uh, uh, when i saw english medium students reading books and everything even i used to do that kannada books but started reading more of kannada english books novels even though i didn't understand anything i started doing that because that special treatment was given to english medium students i felt maybe i learn better english i don't know it was not conscious i don't remember it but started doing that if somebody was reading a thick book i wanted to read that book also in 6 7 standard you used to read all books by enid blyton so we didn't have this harry potter and all at that time i think famous five famous five yeah. and all these books right so and then uh, i whatever books he used to read i would go and you know borrow from library and pretend reading would never understand anything but i persisted with it and then started reading those books started understanding and enjoying those books so i started reading novels and all english novels somewhere uh, that added to personality i don't know people started recognizing the teachers and all that you know he's a serious kid so that was a very transformative stage if somebody was good in something right i kind of wanted to be good also so we see the traits so you don't get jealous so you don't feel bad that someone's better than you at something i never felt bad yeah. about them i never felt be, like you know going ahead of them or something like that i just wanted to be good i just wanted to feel better you know do better so that's why i, I think i tweeted many times that whatever we do it should be uh, i tell students also whenever they come with some problems whatever we do it should be to better ourselves you know to equip ourselves to empower ourselves to enrich ourselves with skills abilities knowledge qualities that people can recognize right so don't do it for recognition don't do it for any kind of outcome right for results do it to feel better do it for yourself yeah to improve yourself and then i think opportunities come knocking that's like actually i had an interesting conversation in delhi like so one student asked if you believe in luck so i said i definitely believe in luck in the sense that uh, when you are kind to yourself when you are easy uh, on yourself when you are just going with the life when you are treating everyone with you know kindness when you don't carry any kind of any kind of hate revenge or anything like when it is life is very much light you know you yeah. feel like floating 
so when you attain that kind of thing luck favors you right of course there is preparation and all but somewhere i feel uh, uh, i think by being being in that state of mind itself is lucky i think i mean we attract those opportunities towards ourselves maybe. when we behave or we think in a particular manner i feel like opportunities will come knocking maybe and we more receptive to them and ready to take the challenges on correct so now you know uh, we've heard that we've heard you speak about jnv so much and it's had such a huge impact on your life so how do you say that you know how did it shape you or mold you into the person you are and what are your you know your takeaways from that schooling like what did you learn from there like recently you tweeted you know it was such a great community you you, you people used to like uh eat together you know uh, share things and there was no like there were no inhibitions or you know like something like you know it's mine or yours you'll just like live together as a family so what are your takeaways from that experience and how do you think like you know how did it shape you like how did it make you like how did it make you who you are today in navodaya school uh, we were put in a dormitory and uh, there were about uh, in in one big building there used to be four wings mm-hmm. in each wing we there used to be around 20 students so we used to like live together right so uh, all the people in one wing used to be partners in everything right the thing is uh, uh, in navodaya school where we grew up uh, there was water scarcity right we used to get uh, water like you know twice or thrice in a week and this is something i was used to before also so it was not odd thing for me but for many city kids it was odd thing they used to lock you know their buckets oh. with water <laughs> so they they used to buy buckets you know where they could lock you know with lid and everything water priced commodity yeah, and we used to steal that water like you know oh. <laughs> and we used to share lots of water you know for bathing and you know washing cloths now and then once in a sunday used to be the week you know when we used to wash our cloths so we used to wash by ourselves so from age 12, 12 i think class yeah. 6 class 6 to class 12 and uh, we washed our cloths and when whenever we used to come to vacation uh, i we used to wash our own cloths and we continued that habit and uh, even now when I, for example went to delhi i did that right like and i think that habit has continued there we used to share our soaps and you know we didn't know whose soap it was oh. everyone's and then uh, if my hair oil was over it was not like personal they used to keep on big hair oil thing for everyone so it was for everyone and like paste and everything especially food so food is one where uh, we used to sit together like one plate four to five people oh, eat nice. from one plate and there were some kids you know who used to feed very fond of each other feed oh. each other also i didn't do that but you used to eat from one plate whenever uh, food used to be short or something one would go and you know use tricks and you know bring more food and other things so all this uh, taught us now when i look back at that time no absolutely there was no focus that you know ki we were learning something out of it we didn't didn't do anything consciously it was part of the life that was the life that was the way of life so surprisingly there was no discrimination from teacher side also right and if at all it was there we we didn't notice it but among us it was there. we used to mingle together and uh, you know sleep together all like study there and you know sleep everyone together so all this uh, community kind of you know living uh, what it did was uh, we uh, not hating anyone right so we faced all those things in the school days right any small fight problems with students so we got accustomed to it got used to getting adjusted you know accommodating others views and others different personalities mm-hmm. views so i think that became part of me and then uh, adventurism like you know to do something new uh, to go out of my comfort zone do something i think that also came from navodaya school and uh, being independent you put me anywhere in the world i can just live you taught you how to yeah. survive you tweeted that not so not to get attached with people and things so i think that also came from nowaday school because though we were all friends living together uh, 
I think uh, we all went out our own different ways, right? After uh, the school, and in school also, every year uh, the books they were all given by the school. They didn't belong to us, right? Yeah. So we didn't own the things, right? Mm -hmm. So somewhere we uh, got used to not getting attached to them. So you learn the sense of detachment. I feel like we were just discussing the other day, Mans, and you you have a sense of detachment, like. you know to everything patience not not truly entirely because of nowadays school so later experiences taught me that not to get attached with people i sincerely believe in that anyone it's actually a very good thing like you know be detached have no expectations from people it's mm -hmm. a really great way to live because then your happiness or you know your sense of self doesn't depend on you know what other people think of you or you know you don't seek validation from them so you're not dependent so you pay the experience them. itself like i was in the beginning very much attached because i really wanted to be an ias officer i strongly believed even today i believe i could really do wonders as an ias officer <clears throat> to bring change in the society to make because i came from that kind of background i always wanted to contribute because i studied from nowadays school totally free of cost uh, i felt i had this obligation to you know give back to society so i thought now uh, ias because we used to teach district collectors dc coming to school and you know whenever they used to come we used to on that day have used to have special pulao that day they used to prepare sweets entire school used to be clean right new uniforms those things so that had some kind of impact so the intention was to serve the society right but uh, during the preparation what happened after like one or two or three year failures when um, i went through all the stages that yeah. aspirants go through you know that so i don't call it depression i don't know only people are defining what is depression i was not into depression because i don't think uh, i never lost sleep sleep is something i never lost i every day of my life i slept minimum 6 to 8 hours every day every day of my existence so far but it was kind of severe disappointment and then there i i was in a relationship also right okay. so before i married and uh, my wife knows about it it's not a secret so that also there was a breakup and you know that also taught me that things are not permanent no i tweeted saying that uh, uh, i said transformational experience breakup yes you did because yeah a student had come asking you you know about uh, how yeah, they're yeah, not right. able to yes, focus yes, correct So, so it is based on that experience so then i felt you know there is no point in getting attached with anything anyone and then uh, just started valuing what presently i have you know with me i think that that has been very rewarding so far nothing is permanent right yeah. uh, including the relationship if you are not performing well we'll do away with you right people feel bad about it but uh, so uh, what i have known is that you know people are also dispensable so i think we must be open to learning from others and you know always improve incrementally like learn from others i think is one should not get attached to anyone or anything yes sir they should know that there is always an expiry date expiry for everything expiry date i was just thinking yes sir so sir you keep tweeting about stealing things you know so only once i tweeted about stealing <laughs> Yeah, so many yeah. times, sir, you you stole chapatis, then you you stole tamarinds and fruits from orchards, and in the school also you kept stealing. So you're such an ethical person, like you know, you always keep telling us, you know, be good and all. So how do you justify stealing, sir? Like so now I don't steal anything. Basically. But how do you <laughs> feel about doing it? Like, do you feel guilty about doing it in the past? I mean, I understand as children, it's it doesn't really count as stealing, stealing, but just you know. Sometimes I feel like I should have stolen more, like. <sighs> <laughs> so it's a fun way of you know having some excitement in living your life. on the edge yeah so the thing is uh, parents never knew about it so they didn't that's why they didn't tell us you know it was wrong yeah if somebody had caught us and then told us it, this is wrong maybe i would have stopped then and there itself there is an interesting story if you want to okay. hear definitely i don't smoke okay i really hate smoking and i hate the smoke itself the smoke that comes out Sorry. of you know cigarettes and everything so in my village uh, when i was fourth standard uh, there was this you know naughty young person so who was like elder so one of them uh, uh, gave me a bd okay ganesh bd 
right mm-hmm. so he wanted me to try it so uh, i tried it's full style because shy, all these people are, they were taking yeah. you know they were enjoying and i was also adventurous let's see and then with one you know what do you call inhalation i was like breathless you know the like coughing 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 it's it was such a bad experience and then i ran away from there and the next day uh, in the school what do you call like you know peppermint type you know there was the sweet candy kind of stuff okay, okay. Yeah. so it it had this cigarette uh, shape it oh, was they used like to a, manufacture those cigarette candies yeah, yeah. cigarette candies yeah. You, you also tasted it no no it, the, everyone used to have, <laughs> they, they used to come in this box i took that bought that and you know i was like in the break in the afternoon outside the school so like this sitting and then you are just like i was licking it so my headmaster you know whose daughter used to talk oh, who yeah. didn't like me getting into navodaya school saw that i'm before getting into navodaya school saw that you know i was pretending like i was smoking so he invited me to his cabin like you know hey you come so then i didn't know like why is calling me then he said what are you doing so i i'm meeting this peppermint show me how you were doing so i then i <laughs> <laughs> live demonstration yeah i gave him that and then he took <laughs> he stick and he hit me hit oh. me like so hard you know like i had what oh do you call God. them in kannada basunde you know correct so he said never ever do that in your life again he had already proven me that you know ki it is all his beatings so that experience uh always remained with me and uh, never again did you try yeah. you know whenever people used to i used to run away my friends started doing and i never did that um, i think similarly when i whenever i no stealing again see small things yeah one rupee that to now and then tamarind from you know the public tree right and in school papaya from you know our biology teachers back at there's a papaya tree so he, he he never used to share so we used to go in the midnight like we used to wait oh. till 12 o'clock in the midnight oh my god put towel <laughs> <laughs> and then go there and you know still they were not even ripe also you know we used to enjoy just the uh, thrill of it you uh, know let's do something that fun. unripe uh, papaya also i think that was also not stealing it was there was a tree and we used to just take it now it might look unethical and other things but at that time it was all fun yes so you had like a really great school life really great childhood and you know yeah like school i enjoyed really so much and um, our school was located on a hill you from jnv chitradurga jnv chitradurga jnv chitradurga yes i think uh, whatever i am telling every navodaya school student can relate to i am sure even today these navodaya students are doing the same thing you know whatever i am telling that's nice and you still in touch with your friends from jnv they are the only friends i have oh really nice like after mm. all these decades so seven years you you literally lived with them no yeah so you had such a strong bond with them and uh, it stays on throughout the life wherever you go now the school students have friends for life and today when they see you so like today you know vinay kumar ji the founder and director of insights ias living in a penthouse and all these you know external things like like you know what do they feel about you like do, do you know are you the same person to them like how how do you relate today like i'm the same person but sadly uh, some of them don't see it that way some of them okay. uh, most of them are very proud supportive even today few of them who are ambitious who used to be i sometimes i sense some jealousy but uh, not so much of it still they are all good with me but uh, you you feel it you sense it whenever you interact with them the way they interact now and the way they used to interact earlier there is some difference but only with one or two people but majority of them are same we do get together and we sit on floor the way we used to know the school if we are to you know uh, stay for a night we do the same thing you know put all the beds on the floor and we sleep all together that's really nice like yeah. it, it sounds so amazing today like to be in touch with your friends and they're so supportive like usually if we see when people you know they grow up and they get their jobs and people do grow apart like you know they change 
So it's really nice to see that you know you are still bonded like you know you know you have this really true strong I don't bond. understand why one should change. I think people transform as they grow like you know maybe It's very strange whenever people tell me that you know you have first of all I don't see myself as achieved so much or anything. So I really don't consider myself as a successful as even in my apartment complex I live like you know one nobody. And uh, even when I come to institution I come like a nobody. I don't come you know with with a sense that it everything belongs to me. I own up everything. No I don't come with that kind of sense. I just walk in the students are sitting i just talk to them i don't know it is like i don't see why people have to change you know just because you have money it doesn't mean that you have to show it off and of course i like to travel in good cars and all but the car is any luxury car i have is again is open for everyone it's, it's not like you know restricted to me alone or you know it's like a maruti van for everyone you're talking like this, like you know you're very i think that's what you know uh, like people come we, we see hordes of students waiting for you every single day to meet you and i think that's the magic like you're so unassuming you you don't have the sense of you know importance people can come just sit across you and you know talk to you like a friend and i think that's what you know help you grow even today like people want to meet vinay so they want to come and talk to you and tell you not just about upsc but all their life's problems like whatever they're facing they think you know they they think you're their friend and they can come and sit and talk to you openly and i think that's what helps because you're so like this is not mine i'm nobody like you have this attitude like i'm just like you know a normal person in a way yeah. that that helps me you know when you yeah. talk to so many people yeah It, so people won't have inhibitions like you know they won't feel afraid or no i learn from them you know i used to read a lot earlier now i don't read that much okay but whatever i'm learning every day is because of talking to students especially yes sir you know nowadays parents come so many parents come and now i see so many parents with their 10th or you know 12th standard kids they also come and talk oh god do you encourage i i really want to do you encourage people in 10th and 12th no, no no i don't yeah. the only thing i tell them get into good college i tell get into stephens miranda house right have a proper college life good college life yeah. focus on personality development participate in every extra curricular activity uh, only in second third year you start thinking about upsc grow i mean develop your interest in uh, current affairs general awareness read books and whenever parents tell you know they want to put their children into distance education i scold them scold in the sense in a real way yeah. right and i have trained many people like you know those who had joined for distance courses i made them join better colleges so when people come to you that young like i've always felt it like what drives them to you know take up the civil services is it really service uh, because you know parents are getting them and you know pushing them into this like the se- several parents say that too so do you ever see like do you see this sense of integrity in the intention to pursue this not with everyone it's very difficult to generalize or you know categorize You 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 cannot see that you know even when you are interacting with students, only when I'm doing mock interviews I'll I some sometimes I get the idea of it, but if a student is regular like familiar uh, with me through regular interactions, so then I know that they have service motivation or some other motivation. And also, sir, like we spoke about you know uh, this bias against people who don't know English, like even in your school or even in society. I think you tweet a lot about. I don't know English. You know, the first time you spoke English was um, in your interview, I guess. Correct. Yeah, in two thousand eleven, two thousand ten. Till then, I hadn't spoken because in our day school we were taught Hindi. I was comfortable speaking in Hindi with them than in English. Okay. PSC intro it happened again in between. I used some Kannada words also. Yeah. And uh, they were all accommodative. They were all liberal. They appreciated that. And they gave very good marks in the interview. the best way to uh, learn speaking is to start speaking in english even when i am speaking i am not speaking a perfect very good english i know i am aware of that but it doesn't matter mm-hmm. people are able to people will be able to understand so i don't know the difference if i use i have to use people are able to or people will be able to right they are able to understand what i am trying yeah, to say yeah as long as it makes sense yeah, like yeah. you can communicate what you thinking it's fine I think we give a lot of weightage to appearances and optics like you know 
how do we come across like you know speak good english so we we think they tend to be more intelligent like you know society no, i tell the same thing to students you know just don't worry about what people are going to label you as you know how they are going to react when you speak something wrong that is what started paying me off yeah and also i just want you all to know like we read your comments in emails and there were a few where you know they've they've spoken about um, how you spoke so sir actually loves it like you you love you were like i want this criticism i want this feedback if because I'm- anything today it's only yeah. because of feedback you said that and it, it's helping you grow so and now we see that you know you're becoming more comfortable also ha ah, see uh, we we improve in everything yeah. when we do something repeatedly regularly consistently right yeah so we get better in that it is all part of the yeah. growth right i i am not like perfect i don't want to you perfect thing and i told people that intention of podcast is to not to portray perfect things yeah. to tell them that things are imperfect i am imperfect my guest is imperfect the listeners are imperfect so we are all connected and also i feel like you know you're not afraid like if you don't know something you're not going to be like oh let me i'll do it when i get to the stage where i'm ready to do it like let me learn and then start you're just like let's just start and we'll improve on the way so you very you know you you feel is like you like taking on the challenges so and learning while doing that is on the website if somebody has followed our website for long term they will know that we have experimented things even today we do that yeah and then things improve right i think that should be the way of life why pretend like you know everything is good and then present only the good part of it yeah right yes so i think we have to develop that kind of thinking in everyone that uh, things are normal i mean this is normal to fail multiple times normal yeah. to not to do well in the very beginning normal to get criticism right when you when things are not going in your favor so when people notice that you know that is the way of life i think there won't be much pressure stress true sir like yeah. we need to normalize being imperfect being ourselves and normally is learning like you know just learn exactly. you don't have to like be perfect and get it right the first time like i remember i was always like normally is learning you know what you said that is perfect so i think that's very important for you know any anybody to even you can not a perfectionist friends. yeah and that's a great thing because perfectionists tend to delay and procrastinate until they feel they're ready to be you know be perfect and then they go and do it like this was imperfect when we started we just like took off because still you know, imperfect Yeah, and we are improving. Like every day, we are thinking of how to improve it, and you know, because so that the larger and we'll community, make mistakes also. Yeah, yeah. Like even me, I I did not know I did like several takes. So just, that that know. is a way of things. You yeah, know, things can't be perfect all the time. Yes, sir. So, sir, we've spoken about you know growing up in the village, your roots, and where you came from, and your schooling. So today, when you look back, do you think you found a balance between who you wish to be at that point in life and who you need to be or who you are today have you found that balance sir and are you satisfied with who you are today yeah like i'm more than satisfied who i am today but if you ask me uh, if i had a vision about who i wanted to be when i was growing up in village and when when i was growing up in my uh, home in my village i don't think really i had any kind of such vision but uh, looking back if things hadn't happened at you know taken place the way they have taken a uh, place now uh, i would have been a shepherd i think see uh, when i was growing up in a village what was happening education was luxury and then uh, if i didn't get into navodaya school by passing the uh, entrance exam in the fifth standard i think uh, uh, i i'm very certain that i would have been a shepherd by you now the reason is uh, it would have been very difficult to focus on education because uh, there was no good school available and uh, maybe my father would have definitely tried his best to put us in good school but uh, apart from me and two more friends who got into navodaya school they are like they discontinued their education oh. so there some of them who continued uh, again they gave up after you know graduation i think so they are doing you know farm work uh, recently i went to village i was able to recognize you know one of my classmate so his name oh. is harish and he was so pleasantly surprised that i was able to recognize him and he didn't recognize me so because we left village uh, like long ago and uh, because i moved into navodaya school so there was no opportunity to go back again and again 
so he he i could recognize and he was uh, just a laborer in you know agriculture land when you ask this question at that time when we were growing up when things were uh, not easily accessible there was this lack of vision you know ki so that was like you know one day at a time kind of life so if i am going to have uh, certain things for us today so we were satisfied with that you ask me question are you satisfied i was satisfied then also and i'm more than satisfied now also and uh, life is very happy now how would, why would you say that you were satisfied then so like if you see from today's perspective when you look back how did you find that satisfaction like you know i i really remember see um, why i say that is that uh, the reason is that so we didn't uh, complain about anything for example we didn't have tv in the entire village i think there were two tvs so we never thought we should own a tv that the thought didn't occur right we never complained that is one reason uh, why we were satisfied we were satisfied because you know village offers you so many avenues to keep yourself busy when you were a child so you have a gang of you know other children so you go out of your home you explore streets you just barge into anyone's home they just treat you as their own children and then you have fields small streams to go and swim and uh, water channels did you learn swimming that way by jumping into those channels ha ah, yeah yeah i am not a good swimmer but okay. uh, yeah so i remember jumping into wells okay. i think oh. anybody who has grown in a village have been through these experiences so so there was no time at the at the same time uh, we were not mature enough to think about life we didn't have that maturity to think about plan about the future and nobody told us about the future okay the life was like a river you know it was just flowing and you didn't have exposure like you know usually when we are kids let's say they'll have an ambition like okay now today people want to become an ias officer or something like that so did you you, did, you didn't grow up with that ambition is it or no 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 so parents never told me to become anything only in navodaya school we got exposed because there were certain english teachers who used to come and tell us you should become officer and all but uh, we didn't know the meaning of ias we didn't know the meaning of officer so we didn't even bother to you know open a dictionary and see what is the meaning of it uh, i think it all depends on uh, as you said certain exposures uh, certain experiences bad experiences where you feel like how can we solve the problem so then somebody tells you know this role can solve the problem so then we will be able to relate and figure it out so those kind of experiences i mean the the life was easy right in like when you are in navodaya school though people were telling i didn't have that uh, ambition you know to become something in life so in fact like you know i just went and wrote cet because somebody told just go and write it and i was getting medical seat mm-hmm. and then i didn't go for medical because nobody told you should go and get the medical so sir when you met your friend like you know from harish how was you know what was his reaction when he saw you you know when he sees you today as you know vinay kumar ji founder of insights and now you say like he's a laborer in an agriculture field like no, he was, was a happy man what i found okay. was he was happy i think like, i didn't see any kind of uh, discomfort or you know embarrassment or anything so he, he was yeah like it was like you know ki we were going there to see a farm suddenly i recognized you know i stopped and he was having a just casual talk with three more people sitting on a you know yeah. uh, some stone like chair yeah. okay so next to a channel so instantly recognized and stopped and you know waved at him and he came as if uh, i was about to ask him direction for something so he couldn't recognize so i said uh, Uh, your Harish, right? We used to go to his home. They had a tractor also at that time, so that was the only tractor I think they had at that time. So we used to go and play in that tractor and all. So I think uh, something happened. <clears throat> they lost. I think in village, what happens? You know, the families get divided, and you lose land and any assets you have. So he said, uh, like he is just working in a agriculture land, and um, then he was happy that I recognized him. So, sir, do you think that's a bad thing? Like today, if we see, uh. if he's a farmer now he should have had ambition to like move out of there and do something with his life like a lot of people have that perspective but there's also this perspective that he's happy he's content with what he's doing and there's nothing wrong in choosing who you want to be or where you want to be so how do we find the balance between you know just being content with what we have and 
you know trying to do something big like what is how do we define what is big what is small you know what is success what is failure like how do we find that balance it's about uh, trying to you know explore the true potential of yourself right so sometimes we, we will not know what is my true potential right certain experiences certain can, it can be failure or it can be small success it can be some kind of good exposure some some kind of bad experience so they will uh, open up our mind to certain realities in life telling us that you know either i can deal with them myself or i can take the help of others so if i want to deal with them myself then i have to enhance my capabilities right so i have to take certain risks to deal with them if i act in that moment so a new dimension is added to my life or i discover my own new potential right so they will add up one after another and uh, people call it success because for some people money follows when they explore life like that so they will become rich wealth is created in some cases they get the influence they become more influential so in some way they become uh, differentiated like you know compared to the rest of the society in terms of how society sees you know common man and uh, those achievers so you distinguish yourself at that point of time what you need to do is that uh, if you start chasing money intentionally so then it becomes very difficult to manage you know the balance between contentment and uh, being successful right now if you are not chasing you are just trying to focus on yourself trying to become better person and allow life to give you yourself you know give you some opportunities and you keep exploring them with an excitement of a child you know ki so let me try this yeah. and then some success will come to you so if this kind of success keeps happening to you it is more organic and sustainable then you are contented that you are always contented with what you have anything that is getting added to your life you treat it as a bonus i tr- i try to do that mm-hmm. so if somebody asks me you have uh, good things in your life today so i tell them everything is bonus in my life that have come my way but do you think like now do you consider him not to be a success and you know yourself successful like no 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 so is it okay there's nothing wrong with him wanting to stay back there right but society would perceive it in a different way no that is way. what no he might not have had those kind of experiences exposure. Yeah. or exposure yeah again there are people who don't like to take risk also even when yeah they should be taking they want to be in this you know in their comfort zone and not mm. again there is nothing yeah. wrong in that yeah if they are choosing their life to be in that way so i think uh, if it is by choice absolutely they are also successful So today sir when you look back at your life you know who you are today is it because of all that you've been through and all that you faced or despite or in spite of it like has it made you or did you like make yourself you know you know uh, breaking down barriers and all the hardships you faced we are all product of our experiences right and uh, also we are the product of our our own decisions the kind of decisions we took when we pursued those decisions when we converted those decisions into actions so then also we become what we are today so there are both the elements are there in my case uh, uh, it's mostly experiences and then uh, my own craving to be a little distinct you know little unique i think that i i, I always had that kind of thinking even in school days right so uh, i think maybe that might have contributed the thing is uh, no one success is the result of one individual's effort so there is always team in the team in the sense not a formal team the people uh, experiences are nothing but you know our interactions with people most of the times so uh, every individual who was part of those experiences is a contributor to your and my success right so in that sense so many people have contributed both through good experiences and through very bad experiences okay sir mm-hmm. but definitely village has uh, i mean it has given me a unique perspective uh, about life in the sense that i'm totally comfortable in living at in an utterly poor conditions even today i'm totally comfortable in living 
five or seven star kind of lifestyle so i can switch to either one of them instantly that's good so you you can adapt easily yes wherever you put in whichever situation so the, at the same time so the thinking right now is that uh, why why go back to that kind of situation yeah i mean if i'm visiting certain place i get adapted to that when you have access to things so you enjoy the best of the life so that is the thinking but at the same time if something goes wrong or if i visit if i go to those places even so many people are you know in villages so i'm totally fully comfortable so your message there. to you know everyone students watching like who you know we get a lot of questions even you you know you meet a lot of students who are quite insecure about where they come from you know their background or their colleges but you know through you we learn to own it you know to be proud of where we're from and to you know really be grounded and you know attached to our roots because that's you know the root is what led to your growth right you you grew from there so would you like to give a message you know to all the students watching sir see uh, those experiences are one's uh, rich repository of knowledge right so if one can look back into their life and uh, start analyzing it so every incident every event that has taken place it gives them a sense of uh, identity sense of uniqueness sense of uh, you know the grassroots level understanding of the things if it is an upsc aspirant who comes from rural area they should be very proud about it and i have seen many officers lacking the knowledge about rural areas and becoming officers trying to solve those problems academic way uh, not in a realistic way so these people actually fit into administration very well instead of sending them to labasna this officer should be sent to gram panchayat for 6 months okay put them in gram panchayat for 6 months right all the officers so let them work in gram panchayat as secretary or panchayat development officer 6 months you know trying to solve every problem that is there in the village so then they will truly become you know indian administrative service or you know ips or whatever officers they are going to become because without understanding grassroots level issues the problems you are not going to become a good officer right? right so you might be a quick decision maker or you know you may be very smart intellectual but even today the problems of villages are still unaddressed we have so many schemes but you go the toilets are still not used because of drinking because of water problem yeah. there is no water supply and then there is a scheme for water supply and then there is no electricity to supply water and then there is scheme for electricity for every home and then there is again no water to produce electricity or no coal to produce electricity so the problems are interlinked so we don't see innovative ideas we don't see that will power uh, the risk taking ability in officers because that exposure is lacking i mm-hmm. think and you, know, you have to deal with village people you know if you learn to deal with village people you know their uh, problems their aspirations their way of treating life so if you if you are aware of these things i think uh, solving problems becomes easy for you right so so thank you so much sir it was a pleasure talking to you today thank you so much uh, even i enjoyed talking to you today <laughs> <laughs> thanks sir yeah thank you